What's up, everybody? Today, I'm going to be talking about GPS fencing, not necessarily the nuts and bolts of it, because these things can get quite technical, but um, how they function as far as, you know, containing your dog, especially for people who don't have physical fences up, or um, if you're like me, I've got a physical fence, but my dogs can jump over it. Um, containment, peace of mind, keeping your dogs, you know, in the general area and not escaping or running off down the street or going off in the woods, getting themselves hurt. I would say they're all high tech, but you know, they, they function differently and you've got some different ins and outs going on. Some are better than others. Um, some got a lot more going on with them than others do. And I think it's important for the audience to understand, you know, how these collars function and, um, which ones work better for you in the long run, especially depending on, you know, where your yard is located. If you're deep in the woods or if you're out in a wide open space, whatnot. Uh, these things definitely make a difference, and I think the importance of pet containment and these smart collars is something worth covering, especially the GPS factor in it. Obviously, there's a lot more things going on like cell phone signal, Wi-Fi, um, things of that nature, but the uh, GPS component is largely what I'm focusing on today, so let's get started. Now, when you create a GPS fence, obviously you're going to do it from your smartphone device or your tablet, iPad, whatever, but you are using GPS signal, at least, you know, to determine the location. Obviously, when you touch your screen and you start moving things around, you're doing most of that within the app, but it's also functioning in conjunction with the satellite or the uh, GPS data that the phone's receiving. So it knows where you're placing the fence. Now, one of the biggest problems that GPS fences have is what's called a uh, fence drift or just drifting. Now, GPS signals, especially, you know, non-military technology, the kind of stuff we have access to is finicky still. It's not perfect. You set up a fence, you may have it shift a little bit north to, you know, three or four feet. You, it may shift a little bit to the east or something like that. Some of the collars are better than others that, um, you know, so the fence drift is a little less uh, uh, that big of a deal. But um, I deal with GPS drift or fence drift. Um, but I do have physical barriers and my dogs generally know where they can go and where they can't because I trained them as I introduced them to the collar. Signal interference, environmental interference, these are other issues that you may have to deal with. Um, when I say that, I'm talking about, you know, if you live in a city or if you live in the woods, and I'll cover more of this in general later on, but um, if you live deep in the woods, you got a lot of tree coverage in your backyard. Um, those things can be problematic. Um, obviously, GPS is going to have a problem, you know, going through your house. In fact, that's kind of how the halo operates. It determines that your dog is coming inside the house because it, it this the GPS signal drops. It has trouble getting through your roof, it has trouble getting through your walls. So the GPS signal drops, the halo determines that the dog is in your house. And that's how these things work. The GPS works in conjunction with your smartphone and obviously your cell phone signal, um, communication back and forth between the collar in terms of its location and um, you put all those things together and you have a functioning GPS fence system for your dog. But no matter how you want to look at it, GPS works best when you have an absolute unobstructed view. Um, outside, no trees, no buildings, nothing going on. Um, even if you have the dog in your car, the roof can be become problematic. So out in the wide open, that's where GPS functions the best. Um, like I said, the spot on has some more advanced technologies. Um, it's probably why it's one of the most expensive smart collars on the market. Um, it uses a dual feed antenna, which is designed to rest on the back of your dog's neck. And again, I'll cover some more of this here in a little bit, but um, they also have uh, true location technology and a forest mode that, that's all, you know, utilized within the forest mode. And that helps out a lot, but there are still limitations. There's no perfect system, you know, at least not available to us, that is going to consistently, all the time, penetrate heavy tree coverage and uh, buildings, especially in the city. Because, I mean, it's, it's one thing to block GPS signal with, you know, some light oak tree canopies, and it's quite another to block it with a, a building, an actual skyscraper or something like uh, you, some of these bigger inner cities. It's going to be much more difficult for uh, GPS signals to pass through those buildings, and um, especially when you need it like that. 
Now, obviously, you've got you know GPS technology in your uh, your cars, your uh, navigation systems, um, your GPS on your phone, and they work just fine in, inside of a city. But when it comes to your dog escaping, or you want to correct your dog to make them come back, it might not be instantaneous because of those barriers. Um, so urban or urban areas are definitely a challenge. And again, the spot on has the forest mode, which is a little more effective, even when we're not talking about trees, we're talking about buildings. But um, it's obviously less effective indoors, which that's perfectly fine because when your pets are indoors, you don't want to have their collar, um, you know, vibrating them and sending loud noises into their ears because then they'll be afraid to come inside. So obviously the collars are supposed to go off when you come inside. Halo has a beacon. Um, I set my Halo beacon up at the door so it deactivates their collars as soon as they come out, uh, come inside. Um, spot on has a home zone. Um, once your dog passes into the home zone, the collars deactivate. Spot on also has keep out zones. And these are areas that you can create within your original fencing area, like sheds, gardens, things you don't want your dogs getting into. And, uh, just outline those general areas and those will serve as keep out zones and they will keep your dog out as effectively as your original fence system keeps your dogs in. Now, obviously, we're inside for now, and Athena's wearing the halo, and Aries is wearing the spot on. The halo works with the uh, the diminishment of the GPS signal as the dog comes into the home. But as an added um, tool, I use the beacon to deactivate her collar when she walks in the door. Aries' is spot on works in a similar manner, except I create a home zone for him. So whenever he passes into the home zone, the uh, collar deactivates so he doesn't have to worry about it anymore and the collars aren't going to sit here and go off and uh, drive the dogs or me crazy so it works out great. Now I said earlier we weren't going to get into the deep nuts and bolts of how these things work but there are some there are a few things um, more broad coverage of how these things work that you should know. Um, They've got multiple different types of antennas. These are how these um, these smart collars work. You've got your linear passive antennas, which um, they're they're decent, but they're highly prone to interference. Uh, they really don't work too well once you get up underneath a, a forest canopy, like some of the tractive systems, the uh, five series three stuff. Um, they're very you know cost effective. These are much cheaper collars, but if you're dealing with an area where your dog may go up underneath coverage they cease to function, you know, in, in real time at least, and they'll pick up whenever your dog comes back out. Then you've got your passive patch antennas. Again, they're, you know, got a good size to them, good weight. They got decent performance, but it's nothing that's going to approach the level of, you know, the spot on Halo 3 um, and some of the higher end, more premium collars on the market. And you get your ceramic active patch antennas. Um, these are usually used um, like off grid, way out in the desert, rugged environments, um, areas that you're definitely not going to have your house built on. So it's not something you really need to worry about. Um, then you've got your active ceramic patch antennas. Um, they actually take weak signals and boost them. Um, but unfortunately, they have a much higher battery consumption. Like some of these cars, 5 Series 3 and the uh, Tractive XL, the batteries last for a very long time, much longer than anything you're going to get from Spot On or Halo 3. Um, the Spot On has the dual feed um, active antenna, and it's probably one of the best ones on the market. Um, I think bar none. Uh, that's again, that's another reason the spot on is the, you know, it carries the steepest price on the market. Um, it's definitely got a lot of technology working for it inside there. And those dual feed antennas are much more accurate than, um, a lot of the competition. I have tested a lot of collars. So, and I always feel like the spot on is doing me one better than each, than any other collar that I'm, that I've been using. Um, then of course you got your GPS receivers, you got your integrated GPS receivers, which smartwatches, um, little Garmin devices, you know, if, uh, you've got a, a Fitbit or a Garmin watch or something like that, you're dealing with an integrated GPS receiver. Uh, some of these smaller, um, more cost effective, uh, smart dog collars are also, um, integrated GPS receivers. Then you got your standalone GPS receivers. They're more bulky, but they're 
far more effective. Um, they have much better performance, lower battery power. Performance going up usually means battery power coming down. And uh, that's what you're dealing with in your Halo 3 collars and you're uh, spot on. If you're looking into purchasing a GPS collar, smart collar for your dog, there are a few things that you uh, want to concern yourself with. Um, number one is the size and the bulk of these things. The spot on here is um, it's a very bulky collar. Uh, there's no kidding around that. These things, uh, especially these two parts right here, it does work as an advantage because it, the weight of it can makes the collar stay like that on the dog's neck. It will spin it around just the weight of it in general, keeping that GPS antenna up top where it has an unobstructed view of the open sky. But it is bulky it is heavy it will not fit on very small dogs the same goes with the halo 3 it's uh bulky it's heavy it's a little more streamlined than the spot on but it will not function very well on very very small dogs we're talking smaller than 11 10 inch necks um this here is a 5 series 3 it basically looks like a genuine regular old dog collar um the only difference is it's got this little GPS receiver in here and we're talking about those little ones again. So uh, the effectiveness of this one is no, got, not going to be anywhere near as the effectiveness of this one here. So collar size, shape, weight of it, those things are all important when you're considering them because, you know, it's the size of your dog is important. So I think size and weight should be one of the big factors that you look at. Um, battery life, again, there's no getting around it. These th this thing right here, you're looking at 25 hours. Um, that sounds bad, but you got to remember that these collars are doing a lot more than this collar. This collar is going to give you over a month, but um, it can't do anywhere near what the spot on is doing. This, the 5 Series 3 and some of these tractives, they're just for tracking only. You can set up a rudimentary uh virtual fence outside but it does not function the same way as the spot on in the halo um and their accuracy is less and again with the fi and the tractives up here you get up underneath tree cover you lose your signal period so if your dog runs away and gets up into the woods then you're going to lose your signal um so obviously those are huge factors that you want to weigh in when you're you know looking into getting some of these smart callers for your dogs and plus it depends on where you're located you know if you're in a, a big neighborhood or if you're out you know in the boonies if you, if you live in a rural environment or if you live in the suburbs or if you live in the cities those things make huge differences too especially where the accuracy of the collars are concerned as you can see here i have a pretty heavy tree canopy which is problematic for gps um GPS has trouble penetrating tree canopies, uh, trees just in general. Um, big buildings that you see in cities and things of that nature. Um, one of the responses, technologically wise, that uh, Spot On has come up with is forest mode. And forest mode, um, they say it strengthens the GPS signal, but basically what you're dealing with is the collars are designed for the weight of the collar to stay down here, keeping the, the antenna itself on the back. And we're using dual feed antennas with these things. so. The antenna being on the back of their neck, obviously it um, gives it an unobstructed view of the sky. And then um, Spot On also uses uh, true location technology, which is a patented technology. And uh, basically what it does is it reduces GPS reflection and just general inter interference. Um, still tell the difference, you know, when it goes, when the dog goes inside your house, when the dog comes outside. But um, it definitely helps with um, any kind of obstructions like trees. So if you have a backyard that's got a lot of trees in it or you got, you know, you're in a city with a lot of buildings, that um, true location and dual feed technology will definitely help out. And we've got the GPS stuff covered, but you also got to consider cell service. That's what transmits your location data wherever you're at, regardless of your, you know, cell signal. Which is why Halo and now Spot On have moved on to universal cell carriers. That means no matter where you are, your collar picks up the strongest signal from whatever carrier in, in that area. So if um, AT&T is stronger than Verizon in one area, you're on AT&T, you know, and vice versa. That's how it works. And um, service reliability is always an issue. Uh, there are rural areas. I mean, when I go pick up my daughter, I run into places where it wouldn't matter if I had AT&T or T-Mobile or Verizon. There's just no signal. 
So that's something that you definitely have to consider. Um, cost is a consideration as well. Uh, the halo, no matter whether you want to use the carrier uh, cell service or not, just want to keep your dog contained in your yard, you still have to pay for it. So you have it, whether you want it or not. If you don't subscribe, then you can't use the collar. I mean, you can put the collar on your dog, but I mean, it's just a aesthetic. It's decorative purposes only. So with the spot on, on the other hand, you can do all of the uh, containment, um, building your virtual fences, keeping your dog in the yard, and you don't have to have the tracking. If you want the tracking, you, you can subscribe to the tracking, and that makes the spot on a little more cost efficient because it's optional and you can opt out of it pretty much anytime you want. It's not something that you have to, um, you know, restrain yourself to for five six seven months you know you sign up for it use it for a month if you don't like it peace out it's done um so that makes the spot on a little more flexible but either way if you want tracking services with these smart callers then you generally will have to have a, a cell service of some kind one thing that you have to remember it cost aside that you're investing in peace of mind um you know, these smart callers will keep your dogs contained. They'll keep you in a general area and keep them from running out, running loose. So whether you're, you know, in a rural location or especially if you're in an area that's got a road anywhere near it, even if it's not a heavily tracked road, um, a heavily trafficked road, you don't want your dog, you know, wandering across it because he or she is not in your yard. Um, so peace of mind is a huge factor here. Um, these collars come with different subscription options. Uh, you know, the Halo 3, that's one of the biggest things holding it back is you have to have a subscription to use it. If you don't use this, if you don't purchase a subscription, you know, you can't use the collar. I mean, you could put it on your dog, but it's basically, you know, aesthetics. It just, uh, it's a big bulky collar on your dog that's absolutely useless. Uh, the Spot On, on the other hand, allows you a much, you know, broader degree of flexibility. You can, um, you can either opt for the uh, cell the cell carrier coverage for tracking purposes, or you can just use it for containment only, just keeping the dogs in your yard and nothing else. Um, and if you do want to get the uh, cell services for tracking, then um, you can use it. And if you don't like it within a month, you, you know you can get rid of it. Peace out. You're done with it. You don't have to worry about it. So uh, there's a lot there's a lot more flexibility with a spot on, but the entire purpose, like I said, is just peace of mind keeping your dogs contained in your yard, keeping your dogs safe so that at the end of the day, you know, your dog is inside your home and uh, everybody is safe and sound. They're part of the family after all, so that's where they belong. And that's pretty much it. Uh, a little bit dense with the information there, but uh, I think it's important information to understand. Um, you know, it's important to choose the right GPS fence for your specific needs. Um, you know, your specific environments, more importantly, um, these things will, like I said, it'll give you peace of mind to help keep your dog contained in your area. And, um, there are a lot of them out there. So you don't want to get caught up in the hype versus what these callers will actually do, which is why I do these videos to begin with. Um, you know, these, some of these things are expensive. The uh, spot on, you know, I think it's still maybe eight ninety nine right now, but in general, it's nine hundred ninety nine dollars. And then the uh, Halo collar is um, is pretty expensive as well, Halo Three. But um, either way, you know, it's it's a sound investment, and um, I want the audience to know, you know, what these collars do, what you can expect from for, from them before you drop that kind of cash on them. Um, as always, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. It's really going to help us out, keep the channel moving, keep the ball rolling. Um, as you can see above my head, I've got other callers up here. I haven't even broken out of the box yet, but um, I will get to them. I will put them on my dogs, and I will test them against all the other smart callers that I've tested them against, and I will let you know how all that turned out. And I mean, that's like I said, that's the most important thing is knowing. So uh, be sure to comment, you know, give me your stories, uh, hit me up with questions, concerns that you have. I always try to get on there and uh, answer them to the best of my ability each and every day. So uh, I appreciate everybody watching and have a fantastic day.